positive 1. Do you see that? And then you'd be looking up the complete wrong thing on your table. So negative 1. I'll put point zero zero just so we're clear on that. Z scores are always rounded to two decimal places for your table. Z sub 2, we're going to have, that's the 125 <laughs> minus 100 over 15. Notice how the only thing that's changing is our x value. If you do that, you get 25 over 15. That's going to be how much? One point, okay, 1 point what? 1.67. Round correctly. You give me 1.66, you are going to be off. 1.6666666 forever is 1.67 according to our round. Raise your hand if you're able to get those two things. Good. Now answer this question. What's the next thing I'm supposed to do? Very good. I want a picture of this. I don't want you to just automatically look stuff up. I want to see a picture representing what this means. So our picture says we've just translated to a standard normal distribution. Something that looks just like that. Can you all tell me what value is in the middle of the standard normal distribution? Good. Because every standard normal distribution has a mean of zero. It's only one of them. And now you're going to place these z's appropriately, including the signs. Those signs are important. So negative 1, is that to the right or to the left? No. So we're going to put that on our chart, maybe over here. That was our z sub 1. Our z sub 2 is 1.67. That's, maybe we'll put it right here. Positive 1.67. Hey, give me a little head nod if you're okay with that so far, where these numbers are coming from and how to put them on the chart. Good. The reason why we draw a picture is because this is a graphic representation of this problem now. We've just translated, here's what you've done, so here's what you need to know. We have translated this number into this z-score. You've translated this number into this z-score. That way you can look them up on the table and find corresponding areas. Because it's a normal distribution, corresponding areas are probabilities for these two numbers. Does that make sense? Now, we're trying to find the area, oh, where? Over here to the left? Over here in the middle? Over here to the right? Middle. Middle. Between. We're trying to find the area between there. So we're looking for this thing. you got a couple ways to do this. If you have a calculator, that's one way. Calculator right now, you'd be looking up normal CDF or norm CDF, putting in the left value, putting in the right value, and pressing enter. True? Did you do that in your homework, by the way? Be able to practice that, I hope. On the table, hey, by the way, your table, you with me? When, when, you, when you find your table, does it give you the area to the left of your value or to the right of your value? So if I'm going to look up this number, on your table, it's going to give me all of this stuff, including this area that I don't want. So if I look up this area, someone with the table do that now. How much is that area from 1.67? Notice on your table, we're no longer looking in the body, we're looking at the sides because you're looking up a z score. Are you clear on that? So look, look up 1.67 and find me the area for that. How much is it? 9.525. With a calculator, can you verify that? that well, actually, you can't because you're going to do the middle thing, aren't you? 9.525. So I looked that up. That gives me this entire area right here. What's the next thing I need to do? What? I do have to look up negative 1. So look up negative 1 in your z-score. It'll be in negative z-scores now. Negative 1.00. How much is negative 1.00? Remember, this is a z-score. I'm looking for the corresponding area to negative 1.00. 1587. Anyone want to double check that? 1587? And make something, a little comment here on this. A little comment. Even though you have a negative <coughs> z-score, Will your area be negative? No. Will your area ever be negative? No. It is a probability, right? Can probabilities be negative? This is an area is a probability. It's never going to be negative. You'll never get a negative area. So if you get a negative number out of that, wow, you've done something wrong. You've done something incorrectly there. Okay, can you tell me, 
if this whole area is 0.9525 and this whole area is 0.1587, how do I find the area between them? So this area right here is how much? 7938.793. Would you agree that the area between these two z-scores is 0 0.7938? That means that since this represented these two numbers, 85 and 125, that's what we did, we translated it. Since this represents this problem, what it interprets as is there is a 79.38% chance that you're going to randomly select someone who has an IQ between 85 and 125. Another interpretation is, since this represents a whole population, 79.38% of people have IQs between 85 and 125. That's most. Right? That's most. It's almost 80% of people. About 80% of people have an IQ between 85 and 125. These 20, just over 20% have something outside of that, below or above. Not, not the same, because we're a little, a little bit skewed to the right here, but, uh, well, I'm sorry, our z-score is a little bit further right than it is left, it's not even, but what we'd say here, interpretation-wise, is one of two things. There's an 80%, 79.38% chance you're going to randomly select someone, and they will have an IQ of uh, between 85 and 125, or other words, you could say is the percentage of people who have an IQ between that range is 79.38. Seventy-nine point three percent of people have an IQ between those two numbers, as stated. So the whole idea: you find your z-score to translate. You look up those z-scores after drawing a picture, and that's going to give you some sort of an area. That area represents the probability that you're looking for. You just need to know that the table gives you always area to the left. So if you're looking for a greater than, you just have to subtract that from one. You know, there's a couple key points I want to make at this at this part of the class. Uh, things that I've been talking about but I haven't really wrote down for you. First thing, we're dealing with z-score. And I, I can't let you forget what a z-score act actually means. What a z-score is, is really it's a distance. It's a distance that a data value is away from the mean according to the standard deviation. What I described it to you on the first <coughs> test was a, a z-score is the number of standard deviations away from the mean. That's, that's how much it is. This is 1.67 standard deviations away from the mean. This is negative 1 standard deviations away from the mean. So a z-score is actually a distance. It's not a probability. It's a distance from the mean. Z-score is a distance from the mean, according to standard deviation. Area is a probability. The area you're finding is a probability. If Z-score is a distance from the mean, either left or right, and area is a probability, this implies two things for us. First thing, can a Z-score be negative? A z-score. Can a z-score be negative? Yeah. Clearly, we have one right there. Uh, yeah, that simply means that you are smaller than the mean. Positive z-score means you're bigger than the mean. So, z-scores certainly can be negative. Area is a probability. Can area be negative? No. No. So whereas you might get some negative z-scores, that's okay, that's allowed. <coughs> that just means you're looking at a value that is less than your mean. 
That's what it means. That's what that means. So we have positive z-score, it's bigger than one. We have a uh, distance with a direction, so positive, negative. <clears throat> areas, it's not that way. In areas of probability, you can't ever have a negative probability. You can't ever have a negative area. Area cannot be negative. <coughs> okay, there's one last thing we can we can do here. The last thing is kind of nice. <coughs> do you remember, uh, you probably seen your homework, how I had you look up a z-score, especially for the thermometer problem, that was like the bottom 10% or the top 80%. We, we realized that like bottom 30% and top 70% actually mean the same thing. Top 90% and bottom 10% mean the same thing. Uh, but we can take that and actually find a data value that represents that information for us. So we're going to go one step further. <clears throat> I'll say that uh, we can find data values from z-scores. <coughs> Freak out, but we're going to do a little algebra. Are you ready? Oh, you should be excited. Aren't you excited to do algebra? Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you scared me for a minute like you weren't excited to, to do, do algebra. <laughs> I'm going to look at the z-score. That's a formula which we all know probably by heart, and of course we love this formula. Now, can you tell me what is the data value that I'm talking about here? What letter? Good. What's the mean? What's standard deviation? And Z stands for clearly our Z score. The question is, well, normally I go from this side to get a Z score and look that up in the table, right? What if I'm giving you a Z score, can you go backwards and find a data value? We should be able to, with an equation, solve for any missing variable that we want. Now, naturally on the problems, I kind of have to give you these two numbers, or you have to have some way to find them. If I give you these ones and this one, you can find a z-score. If I give you these ones, which I will, and this one, you should be able to find that number. So what we're going to do right now is try to isolate this equation for x. And in doing so, we'll be able to translate z-scores into data values. Are you ready? So let's use a little bit of our algebraic skill here. How can I isolate this x term by itself? What's the first thing I need to do? Hmm? Very good, yeah. This is divided by sigma, the way we get rid of sigma, <coughs> multiply both sides by sigma. That's going to be gone. What we get out of this is sigma times z. <coughs> equals x minus mu. Are we done? No, I still want to kind of keep going here. I need to get x by itself. What do I need to do to get x by itself? Um. Now, of course, these are not like terms. So when I do this, <coughs> wow, that's a w. That's not even a mu. <laughs> I get mu added on there somewhere. Notice 